Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents, The Current, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this project for a while. I love interviewing funny people. He loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy with, in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now the current with our guest, Martin Urbano. That's me. Welcome back. <laughs> Much smoother this time to get on oh, the mic. And... Somehow. <laughs> Well, let's kick off the current episode with this question. And this Ooh. time, you are not restricted to one word. Oh. How would you describe your life today? Mm. <laughs> so I can say like, <laughs> so I can say like a sentence? <laughs> sentence, a paragraph. A paragraph. Um. Consider this creative writing exercise, but with words. I would Spoken. hope, I would hope this is like, uh, you know, the calm before the storm, right? Oh, yeah. I would hope, um, this is all I'm doing. I work as a delivery driver. Okay. Drive around during the day. Very easy job. Mm -hmm. mm, I do comedy at night. That's it. Yeah. You know, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. I'm, so I'm hoping it's leading to something, but. You know, just making enough money from delivery to keep doing comedy every single night. Right. And right. just hoping this all That's the running matters. theme I hear. <laughs> just working to do comedy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, I, don't, I don't know. You can keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually, I, I usually ask the, the style question during this segment, but we, I think, I think we covered that fairly mm. well mm. in the, in the past episode. Uh, one of the things that you're, kind of known for <laughs> is you open for Chris Kattan and oh, man, as a, within the fame. last year you've now opened for him twice yeah how I'm... did the second time go <laughs> Martin uh you know I'm just uh I'm, I'm very lucky in that you know me and Chris uh <laughs> you know we have we were very tight <laughs> he really uh he really went to vouch for me now nah, he did he <laughs> if you told him my name he would have no clue who that was yeah. uh, uh but he he I have a vague feeling of, I feel like I should hate this guy. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, did, did we, uh, did we talk about the first time I opened for Chris Kattan on, on the other show? Uh, the, the past episode or the, the, the on, other podcast that I do? On your other podcast, yeah. Uh, I think we did. Yeah. Which is Radio okay. Tatas. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if we were supposed to, I don't know. I was, I was trying to, you were being kind of coy about yeah. it. I was like, am I supposed to be coy yeah. too? Yeah, yeah, Radio Tatas. Uh, yeah, so. You know, that's, that's been documented. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, and that is an excellent episode, by the way. That's where Martin that's, succeeded in making me spit out Red Bull that's great. all over the, you know, it's a, the it's material. a real, it's a real uh, badge of honor for a yeah. comedian. It's yeah. the, the old coveted spit take. Um, yeah. Uh, so the second time, I mean, I saw he was coming to the little Cap City Comedy Club, yeah. you know, uh, happiest place on earth, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to get booked there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that a problem? For you? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you just played been, last been, weekend. Shut up. <laughs> they've been very kind to me, and yeah. you know, I, I I love Cap, and so I saw Chrissy Tang was coming. And it's like, oh, you know, I would love to be able to keep yeah. this bit going, of you know, having this credit. I, every yeah. time anybody asks me a credit now, because I I don't think any comedians now, well, at least of all me. Um, but like a lot of comedians don't have good credits on this level, mm -hmm. but at least credits that would matter to anybody. So when people ask me, I think it would, it's just so silly to right. say open for Chris Kattan because it means nothing. Right. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about a lot of these credits. You know, once you get like, you know, I don't know, there, there, there's some good credits down, but I didn't have anything to my name mm -hmm. and anything I would have said would have like semi-finalist and funniest person in Austin. That's not a real credit uh, to, in, in my eyes, to, you know, yeah. to some people maybe it is, but, um, in my eyes. Anyway, so I wanted, I wanted that, I wanted that to keep going, and I thought it would be so funny right. if I was able to do it again, you know, so, and I would love to go for a three for if, you know, we'll, we'll, but we'll see how that goes. But, uh, yeah, so I just, uh, I just asked, uh, uh, Cap, and was like, hey, can, I have, I've hosted for Chris Kattan before, you guys haven't, uh, you know, booked me in a while, if, if that worked out, that'd be great, if not, totally understand, but there we go. And, Sent that off and was like, okay, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, they gave, they gave me the, nice. they gave me the night and I was, I was very happy because uh -huh. I thought it was so funny. Right. Um, I went, it was like a sold out show 
and I go up first. I'm I'm hosting a packed room, and I just eat it. Oh no! <laughs> I just eat a fucking huge. Oh no! Ah, uh, boy, oh. it was uh okay. It, it it wasn't as bad as I'm as I'm, you know, in my mind. Yeah. But just comparatively to how well other people on the show did, and how well you know, oh oh oh, Chris did. <laughs> Oh, Mr. K. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it just did not go well. And I was like, yeah, well, yeah, you know, <laughs> like one good point, thing I got out of this was right, two time opener, two time, for, two time opener. <laughs> but at this point, you know, if you've made it twice, then you're a shoe in for the third time <laughs> and you'll be better. Well, and you won't need it as bad. <laughs> I think now also that, that was also, I hadn't hosted there in a while. Uh-huh. And, you know, when I had, been hosting i was still a little bit green Mm -hmm. so yeah of course it was going to be rough and then like the rest of the week ended up being pretty good i ended up hosting the rest of the week he was only a one-nighter and then i hosted for uh, Dov david off him um he was really cool and i had such a good time the rest of the week and uh and i feel like now i'm better as a host so now if he were to come back But I, I just think there's something about Chris Catan fans that just mm-hmm. don't really connect to my uh, brand of humor. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's talk about, well, I guess I should ask you this because I don't know that the, that show necessarily is your coolest show. But what is the, what would you say? If, if, if not that show, what is the coolest show that you've done in the last year? And not as, I, we're going to get uh, to the shows that you run. Oh, uh, yeah. Um. I mean, there, there are so many good shows here in Austin, and I've been very lucky to be, yeah. uh, put on a good amount of them. Um, but in particular, you know, standing out in recent memory was, um, you know, you, uh, Stand Up Empire. Are you familiar with, uh, it's, uh, it's run by Brentley, Brentley Hilbrun, and, uh, he, He's doing, it's, it's like going to be a TV show. It started off as like an open mic at, at, uh, Empire of some venue downtown. Okay. And now they're making it like a TV show for like PBS. Like, oh, uh, yeah, the Austin, okay. it's like, yes. quote, the, yes, the, yes, the yes, thing yes. they're saying, Austin City Limits yeah. for Comedy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they, they packed out that, uh, that, that venue that, cause there's, there's an inside one where they would do like the mic and then mm-hmm. there's an big outdoor one, you know, for like big music events and stuff. Okay. But you know, this is for comedy. So there's like, 400 500 people there all like excited because it's a tv taping you know yeah. and uh and yeah i was asked to do the nice. first one they're doing they're doing a second one coming up if this comes out before that uh i guess i'll promote it just because it was such a blast uh for yeah. me to to do and the audience seemed to have a really good time but yeah that was uh i mean that was one of the biggest audience i've audiences i've performed in front of mm-hmm. and they were just such a hot crowd and it yeah. was just so much fun and there's just you know a bunch of my friends there yusuf yeah. was there and Oh, Rob Gagnon and yeah. everybody on the show was great. It was such a fun time. Uh, I remember yeah. Chip Pope was on the lineup. Chip, and, yeah. You know, he's not in Austin anymore, mm-hmm. but he's got, you know, cred. Yeah, as okay. A, he as, won funniest in person. I don't remember when, but yeah, yeah. He's, when. uh, yeah, I, I had never met him before, but you know, I was, I was a fan and I heard oh. of him. Like, you know, there's a lot of people you hear about before you actually meet them. And, mm-hmm. uh, he was very nice to me. Like he, he didn't, we hadn't really met. And then he saw my set and he was very complimentary. And I was like, Oh, this, you know, this is, this feels very nice because yeah. I'm a fan of you. And he's like, Oh, okay. So yeah. that was a, cool. that was a good interaction. Well, let's talk about the shows that you run. You just had oh. one. Uh, well, all yeah. right. So in the, I guess in the interest of being evergreen, I can't say that you just ran one last night, but you have a, <laughs> you have a recurring show yeah. called, the, so last night was the, uh, the Little Miss Comedy Patch. There we go. Yeah. Uh, that one's a fun one. Uh, I run that with old Yusuf Roach and, uh. Is that we- a thing to call him old Yusuf Roach or is that just your thing? <laughs> That's, I don't know why. I, I guess, uh. Is he old? He's not old. Um, uh, no, he's, anyway. he just has like a old bitter soul. Oh. <laughs> nah, he's, he's, he's a good young guy. Uh, and ladies, he's single. Oh. <laughs> you heard it here? Second or third. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, we, we used to run a show called Taco Party. Okay. Uh, it was Yusuf Roach's Taco Party with Martin Urbano. We worked from the title, uh, uh, backwards. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, and so that one we would, we, uh, would buy f- tacos for the audience 
and then just like it was like a give them out and like uh-huh. beer and stuff uh and so you're bribing your audiences yeah and we were losing money <laughs> we were Go losing figure. a lot of money uh were you doing this near campus by any chance uh it was at the old new movement theater oh. <laughs> um yeah we were we were really losing a whole lot of money uh-huh. so we had to stop doing that and then we did cupcake party so we did so we did that one for a few months and then we had to we changed it to cupcake party because we had a cupcake hookup and okay. we could get them for the you know on the on the dl yeah so we could stop losing money uh-huh and then the health department got like wind of it or oh, whatever. No. Apparently, we were doing something wrong, so we had to stop. Uh, and so we changed it to surprise party. Okay. And then we would give away like you know like little cupcakes from like Hostess cupcakes. Okay. So that was since they were prepackaged, that wasn't a problem. Uh-huh. And then we kind of just stopped getting a good audience because it was it was like a Sunday night show. Mm. At like nine, really. We couldn't compete with Game of Thrones or whatever was on. And so we're just like, ah, this isn't fun for us anymore. We're not getting good crowds. Mm-hmm. It's pointless to keep doing the show here. So, you know, we hung up our hats. And then you know, the new movement asked us, uh, if, you know, they offered us a Friday spot, which is oh. a, a hot night. Yeah. Good for comedy. People are actually out. You know, other shows are happening there at the theater that night. So you get some carryover and stuff. Mm-hmm. We're like, absolutely. So we thought of a new show and then we just, uh, you know, thought of a couple ideas, and uh, the idea of a comedy pageant was the funniest mm-hmm. to us. So we've been doing that. This is our sixth one last night. So what is uh, the concept? Uh, it's like three different rounds, and it's like it's like our best idea of like a mock pageant okay. about comedy. So like the first round, we just get everybody. We tell all the comedians to get nice and dressed up in like these crazy outfits, whatever they want to wear. Some uh-huh. people are actually go for like a to look very nice uh-huh. some people go very crazy uh mk paulson last night dressed up as a uh, gay jesus uh, um so people people are very you know liberal in what they yeah. what they decide to to wear and that's part of the fun so yeah. the first round we just like introduce everybody they get to show off their outfit they get to like introduce themselves to the audience uh-huh. second round they all do stand up because you know or whatever like roxy uh, castillo was on last night she didn't do straight stand up she uh-huh. uh she she did her own thing and you know so that it's like six minutes of we trust the comedians to do whatever they want. And then mm-hmm. third round, we asked the audience to write questions beforehand, ah. you know, Miss America type questions. Sure. So, you know, we just ask in like a very – we don't tell the comedians anything beforehand. So sometimes they're really stumped and, yeah. you know, you, you kind of feel bad. But it's like that's part of the that's fun. Part, it's part yeah. of the fun. Yeah. Silliness. And then, you know, we pick a winner at the end. Cool. Uh, and, yeah. Very cool. But you run another show, too. I run another show, The Damn Dirty Filthy mm-hmm. Show, every third Saturday at Nasty's Bar. Okay. Well, actually, you know, maybe I shouldn't uh, plug the place. I don't know about uh, – I don't know how long we're going to keep doing it there. Mm. Um, just because we're having trouble – a little trouble with getting a hold of the management, and mm. he's being a little weird as of right now. But, but the concept of that show But is... the concept of that show is, is just a – dirty show just it's just filthy. a show where we encourage people to bring their most offensive dirtiest stuff that actually came out of when i was uh hosting a lot at cap like uh oh, a little show? over a year ago hmm? the cringe-tacular is that what oh. i'm thinking of no i actually never did uh matt's okay. show yeah i never did the cringe-tacular mm-hmm. um but and it, it didn't come from that it, okay. it came when i when i was just hosting just shows yeah. and as a host they ask you to be clean and they asked you to be, you know, relatively clean, but like still, mm-hmm. a lot of my stuff was too dark to be a host. Yeah. Uh, so I was just getting a little frustrated because I'm like, oh, my, my material, I don't, oh, my clean stuff kind of sucks and I just don't feel like happy with it. And I got mm-hmm. all this dirty stuff. I guess I should just throw it away. I don't know what I've got to do with it. You know, I was having a little, little bit of a crisis and I just kind of talking to Abby Rosenquist, uh-huh. uh, just about this kind of stuff. And she was like, I want to do a dirty show. You want to do a dirty show? I'm like, I absolutely want to do a dirty Perfect. show. Let's do it. And then, uh, Ella Gale, comedian okay. Ella Gale was standing right next to us and was just like, I was thinking about, you know, giving up my, sh- uh, open mic at Nasties. Uh, you should ask them about, you know, uh-huh. doing the show there. Mm-hmm. And we we're like, the damn dirty filthy show at Nasty's I'll bar. Be. Are you kidding me? What, you know, everything's lining up perfect. Yeah. Everything's right. Uh, the open mic is actually still happening. We ended up getting a different Saturday. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, just, it was, it was an excuse for all the comics to just let loose. We mm-hmm. feel like, and the people who do best there are people who either, you know, are a little too, 
<laughs> dark offensive uh, maybe for some people like uh, uh, norm wilkerson oh, uh, you know geez. norm <laughs> you know uh, he uh, he destroyed when he was on yeah <laughs> you, you know just the, the worst. <laughs> this very uh that some audiences might might be a little too yeah. chicken for we we, yeah. we feel like uh, the dirty show provides a place yeah. for people like that yeah. or people who like write their own jokes or like mac uh blake mm-hmm. didn't doesn't really have anything too dirty so he wrote jokes specifically for it and you know huh. just brought the house dance you know? yeah so so just two shows <laughs> Those are the two. Those are the two shows I run. I'm yeah. talking. Um, Chris Tellis and I are in, are talking about uh, starting a new one wow. uh, called the Riff Sessions, uh, where we. It's that's. Uh, I feel like you can kind of tell from the title. <laughs> we just go on stage, nothing prepared, uh-huh. and we just try to riff. Chris uh-huh. is one of the most naturally funny people I know, uh-huh. and is just so so great in conversation. In his mind, it's just like working, yeah. you know, a million miles an hour. Uh. And I am very bad at riffing yeah. <laughs> on stage. I'm very scripted usually. When I'm loose, that's, you know, it's a little bit different, but yeah. I'm not ever riffing off of a thing usually yeah. for long periods of time. I'll be able to like, you know, make a remark and then get back into my act or, mm-hmm. you know, be a little loose with my act, be a little bit, you know, but that's, that's also when I'm in top form. Yeah. It doesn't happen often. So I, I was just talking to him about it. And it's like, I think this would be the perfect thing for like me to get better mm-hmm. at riffing. Would be to pair myself with somebody who I think is, you know, fantastic at it yeah. and basically just thrown in the deep end and trying to host the show. Yeah. And we we'll just, we just ask comedians to come on and they can riff, like they can do crowd work. They can, we'll be on stage. We, they can riff with us. Uh, they can riff about the room. They can do anything. They, they can even talk about something that happened to them that day. Okay. But like, as long as it's not like a fully formed bit mm-hmm. or anything. Um, yeah. So that's what we're, in, we're in talks to do that. Um, so ho- hopefully that ends up working out, but yeah, that's our that's our idea for it right now. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so are there things that you would like to spend the last moment uh, promoting besides these these shows? Um, honestly, Do you have anything coming up? Uh, what do I got coming up? I don't know. If, I saw if you on Facebook. Or... You're you're looking at some some festival work. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I submitted to Bridgetown. Okay. Um, I think I got some like other stuff coming up. Cool. Uh, some cool stuff coming up. But yeah, I don't know. Not, nothing really that I I feel the need to promote other than see you. Uh, my you know my shows. And yeah. Especially the Dirty Show. That one's that one's the one that's closest to my heart. Yeah. Uh, more than Little Miss Comedy's fun, but Dirty Show's my yeah. uh, my baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool, and, and it's it's cool to hear how the scene. Has developed that you can you know you I know there's the community is is friends makes friends with one another and then you kind of do these little pairings and you're like hey we'd kind of like to do this type of show yeah. and then you you do it so there's really something for just yeah. about every I mean, flavor there's and there there are so many good comedians it's like I want to work with everybody I would yeah. love to do stuff with like everybody yeah. Yeah. um. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very yeah. lovely, talented scene we have got yeah. going on. It is. It's very. All right, so I'm gonna ask you. We're gonna go back to the one word. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Take a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> Your closing question. <laughs> My God, Martin, are you okay? Uh, I don't know. What's the question? Tell me. Lay describe it on me. one word to describe your future. Oh God, uh, death. Uh, no, no, that's no. Uh, that's it. You had one shot. Answer. Damn it! One no, shot, I'm gonna die. Man. No, if we leave it like that. I'm gonna die. Um. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh. Life. <laughs> that was stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you want another I'm bite sorry. of cookie? Yeah, I'll just take a... All right. Well, that's a that's a wrap on Comedy Wham presents the current with our guest Martin Urbano. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Tell us where to find you on social media, Martin. Um, please follow me on Twitter at Martin Urbano. Um, I tweet a lot of bad tweets. Um, but I sometimes I tweet a good one. Sometimes I'll retweet good people. So fair enough. Listen to part one for more information about how our guest got to be the comedic genius you heard today. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, The Current, hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com. 
Give a follow on Twitter at Comedy Wham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. <laughs>